Hey, how's it going everybody? Today's video is going to be on a NGOM Torment 10 Jade Harvester speed farming build in patch 2.4. Very similar to the old NGOM speed builds back a few patches ago for Torment 6 farming. It was like kind of the go-to spec for Witch Doctors for Torment farming at the time. And uh, it's really pretty similar in how it plays and it's very powerful and very fast with the revamped Jade Harvester. As far as the gear goes, there's really only two things that are mandatory in my opinion. That's the NGOM for this type of build and then the six piece of Jade Harvester. After that, you can kind of mix and match items and figure out what you like and see how your playstyle dictates the build and what you want to do. But as far as the revamped Jade, the two piece is whenever Haunt lands on an enemy already affected by Haunt, it instantly deals 120 seconds worth of Haunt damage. The four set is Soul Harvest gains the effect of every rune and has its cooldown reduced by one second every time you cast Haunt or Locust Swarm. And the sixth set reads, Soul Harvest consumes your damage over time effects on enemies, instantly dealing 300 seconds worth of remaining damage. And you'll see here in a little bit that Creeping Death has had its duration increased to 3600 seconds. So that's the 300 seconds each time you Soul Harvest, 300 seconds of that Creeping Death. As far as the Jade pieces themselves, on the Jade Harvester Swiftness, you really just want defensive stats. You can also get movement speed here if you want to. If you forego the movement speed for more defense, you can get your movement speed from Paragon. On the Jade Harvester's Courage, again, defensive stats. On the chest piece, Intelligence, Vitality, and then you're either going to go Haunt Damage or Locust Swarm Damage. Either one is fine. On the Helm, Int, Vitality, Crit Chance, and a Socket with a CDR Gem. Now in this build, I'm running a gold wrap, which takes care of basically all the toughness. If you're not doing that, it might be better to run a life percentage gym here. Jade Harvester's Joy, you're going to want Int Vitality, a cooldown reduction roll, and then either Haunt or Locust Swarm is ideal. Jade Harvester's Mercy, Intelligence, Crit Damage, Crit Chance, and a cooldown reduction roll. Then we've got the NGOM. Really here, you just want as much damage out of this as you can possibly get. Uh, this is one of my older ones, so I didn't roll the damage up on it. It was when I just wanted more toughness for whatever I was doing at the time, but it still works just fine. You really just want it to be ancient, and you want it to be 10 seconds, because as long as it's 10 seconds, it takes care of all of the cooldown of your Spirit Walk and almost all the cooldown of your Soul Harvest. So 10 seconds is really where you want to be at, but you could make it work with an 8 or 9 second NGOM just fine. You can also potentially do something with cubing the NGOM where you always get to 10 seconds if you really wanted to. Got the brand new Vile Hive. Locust Swarm gains the effect of the Pestilence Rune and deals 59% increased damage. And as you can see, I don't even have Locust Swarm on my bar anywhere. So the Wormwood in the cube is casting Locust Swarm for me, and then that Locust Swarm is getting the Pestilence Rune from the Vile Hive. So pretty nice synergy with those two things. As far as rings go, now rings are where there's definitely some room to decide what you like. The brand new Ring of Emptiness, you, you gain extra damage when enemies are affected by both your Haunt and a Locust Swarm. This is best in the cube because you're always going to have it be at the 100% mark in the cube. But uh, unfortunately, I don't have a good Avarice Band, which is what I'm using in the cube currently to run it on my character. So we're running it here. But I would recommend it in the cube. And then we've got the Rochelle's Ring of Larceny, so when we horrify something, we get another burst of speed, which is pretty nice. And then again, the Avarice Band in the cube, which we'll go over in a minute. I was running Convention of Elements in this build for more damage for a good while. You'll even see it in some of the gameplay from time to time in this video. But I kind of came to the conclusion that there's just so much damage potential with this build already for Torment 10 that it was just kind of overkill and I didn't need it. Got the Gold Wrap for the belt. Again, this with the boon of the hoarder legendary gem as soon as you start picking up gold at the beginning of a rift you get to the point where you're basically indestructible you have to be very careful at the beginning of the rift just like any other gold wrap build to not die right away i'm running nemesis bracers on my character i prefer that personally so i don't have to hot swap to them when i come to a shrine of some sort and you really want to make sure you're running nims in some way because the more elites and champions you're killing the more ng on procs you're going to have and then we've got the Hellfire Amulet with Int, Crit Damage, Crit Chance, a Socket, and the Confidence Ritual Rune. 
As far as legendary gems go, the Bane of the Powerful, this will be up. As soon as you kill your first Elite or Champion or Goblin, it's going to be up the rest of the Rift. Tons of damage there. The Boon of the Hoarder, again, the synergy with the Gold Wrap and just more movement speed. On top of that, we have the Empowered Rifts in Patch 2.4, which is actually somewhat of a Gold Sink now. So it makes even more sense to run Boon of the Hoarder when you're doing just Torment Farming. And then we've got the Bane of the Trapped which a lot of times you're going to be right in melee range anyways just to proc it with its secondary effect and then also haunt slows enemies to proc it as well. Alright next up we have the Kanai's Cube and the first in the weapon slot is the Wormwood. Now it's really pretty awesome with the Kanai's Cube we're able to run both Wormwood and Ngeom because back in the day when this was kind of a build for Torment 6 farming you had to choose between the two it was either Ngeom or Wormwood. Now we can do both and I can't imagine running any other weapon. You're either going to be running Wormwood on your character or in the cube one way or the other because it's just that good. You're able to just spam haunts at that point and allow the Wormwood to constantly spread your pestilence to all the enemies. We've got the Quetzalcoatl, Locust Swarm, and Haunt now do their damage at half the normal duration, effectively doubling your damage. And then the Avarice Band, which gives us up to 30 pickup radius, which just has... Incredible synergy in the build. You're picking up gold from forever far away for the Boon of the Hoarder and the Gold Wrap. You're also picking up health globes from far away from Gruesome Feast. You're getting cooldown reduction with Grave Injustice. There's all kinds of different stuff. I pretty much can't imagine not running the Avarice Band. The only way is, like I said earlier, to run Thing of the Deep on your character to get the pickup radius that way. Unless you just have absolutely insane gear and you've got pickup radius rolls as secondaries on like every piece of gear. But even then, I think I would still probably want to run the Avarice Band. Next up we have the abilities. Haunt Resentful Spirits. Now, a lot of people you see running Poison Spirit, and that's probably correct for pushing, more than likely. But for a build like this, where you don't need the extra 20% damage, it's much better to release two spirits per cast. That way you spread the haunts faster than then soul harvest quicker and then move on to the next pack. Summon zombie dogs chilled to the bone. Now th this is mostly there for fierce loyalty proccing and you get a little extra damage against single targets. If you are not running the gold wrap I would recommend running the life link dogs for 10% more damage absorption. Then we got Piranha's Perinado just to pull things together. I don't cast this a lot. It's mostly on Elites and Champions just to make sure everything is grouped up for your Soul Harvest. Spirit Walk Severance. This is kind of what really makes the build work well. Uh, being able to move at an additional 100% move speed at pretty much all times is absolutely insane. So you're getting 50% just from the normal Spirit Walk and then another 100% from this. And Spirit Walk is now a 10 second cooldown, so with a 10 second NGOM, you're able to move at that speed all the time, basically. Which is really, really sick, and it really rivals the Angry Chicken as far as speed. Uh, I think Angry Chicken builds are still going to be the best when all you're really trying to do is just get from point A to point B. But this is close, man. The, this Spirit Walk Severance is one of the best changes in this patch, in my opinion. Soul Harvest, doesn't really matter what rune you run, you're going to get all of them. So you're going to be getting mana back, you're going to get some life back, you'll get armor per stack, you'll get movement speed per stack, and then you'll do a little bit of damage each time you Soul Harvest as well. We've got Horrify Stalker for a little bit more movement speed there, and then on top of that, again with the Rochelle's Ring of Larceny, every time we Horrify something, we'll get even more speed. Fierce Loyalty for the speed, you guys are seeing a theme here I'm sure. Gruesome Feast, basically going to have five stacks of Gruesome Feast all the time with how fast you're moving, which is a huge, huge boost in damage. Grave Injustice for the CDR, there are times where you have droughts from Elites and Champions, so you don't have the NG on proc, and Grave Injustice really, really bails you out during those times. And then the Creeping Death, which again is 3,600 seconds now, and uh, is really what allows your soul harvest to deal so much damage it's absolutely mandatory to the build let's quickly talk about a few items that i think are good alternatives so we've got the haunting girdle if you decide not to go the gold wrap route the haunt releases one extra spirit which means you're casting three haunts every time you haunt which is really really good for speed farming and it would be the second best belt for this build in my opinion i like the gold wrap setup mainly just to keep your experience pools 
without dying because every once in a while you may die you know potentially if you're going to run without gold wrap you probably want to run like spirit vessel possibly and some other things for a second life just to be on the safe side the belt of transcendence is just fine as well getting those 15 fed of sycophants out the tank for you is always really nice i think this is a little bit better in pushing solo progression builds but can still be fine in a speed build again the convention of elements is totally fine if you feel you need more damage the Sacred Harvester is going to give you a ton more toughness and even more movement speed uh, if you really want to run it. It's not really going to give you more movement speed than the Ngeom is, simply because with Ngeom you're going to have Severance all the time. But Sacred Harvester potentially has a little bit more of uh, consistency to it, I guess would be the way to put it, uh, if you want to run that. Now Sacred Harvester is the best weapon for pushing builds, but for this build, I wouldn't recommend it, but if you like it, go for it. And then we've got the Lacumba's Ornament, the brand new Bracers. Reduces all damage taken by 5% for each stack of Soul Harvest you have. There's some more damage mitigation there. Again, something if you're not running the Gold Wrap, then that may be something you want to run, potentially. So there you go, guys. I hope you enjoyed the build. Thank you very much for watching. And again, just remember, this is the PTR. Things may change. If they do, check back for updates. And then also just check back for more PTR content in the coming weeks. Thanks again, guys, and I'll see you next time.